Hi, this is John and welcome to my 3D Printing Corner. Today I've got something Pico to show you. So stay tuned and I'll show you more. Okay, so what I have here today is the Pico Hybrid Hot End. It used to be from B3 Innovations and now a company called Metaform.us is re-releasing this product and they, they've made some changes to it. So some of the features are that it's incredibly light and compact. Fully put together, everything you see here is 28 grams and it's 39 millimeters long with the standard collet. And to make it easier to adapt, they, they have an optional collet that makes it the same length of your standard V6. You can see here we've got a PTFE line nozzle, and this comes in a couple varieties. They have an A2 tool metal version uh, for, for running your abrasive filaments. The PTFE lined is good for up to about 235C and then they recommend you switch over to their all metal hot ends. The all metal is good up to uh, 300C in this variety and uh, they're working on a 500C uh, version as well. It will have its own 5 volt blower motor and this is a pre-production unit so this particular shroud that they have on it is a little bit different than what you'll see on their website. Here is the, uh, the heat sink and you can see how tiny that is compared to a V6. We've got the, uh, the heater block and the cool thing with the heater block when we screw in the nozzle you can see the nozzle goes all the way through the heater block and that prevents you from getting leaks above the heater block like you do on, on say a V6 or um, more notably on a Chinese clone. The heater cable you can see it's got a nice 90 degree bend there with a clip on it to prevent you from wearing it out prematurely for example, something like on this hexagon hot end, the first time I went to change my nozzle I actually broke the heater wire because as I was twisting the wires around just to get this out of the printer, that was enough to break it. So they've got this nice reinforced heater cable on, on the Pico Hybrid and it's press fit into the heater block. Okay find the right camera angle here and you can see it's got this little um, flange here so that's going to be the, the side that goes down and you can see just how far up the nozzle goes into the heat into the heat sink so again that's part of their their no leak design simply screws into place like that then we put on uh, the collet adapter. On the side of the heater block you screw in the thermistor. And again this is spring loaded and that will help you from uh, accidentally breaking things. Next, you'll put on the, uh, the, the fan shroud. Now if your printer does not have the ability to run a 5 volt fan, there is a little buck converter and then that will allow you to, to, if your printer is 12 volt or 24 volt, you'll use this buck converter to convert the, the fan over to, to 5 volts. So that is the complete Pico Hybrid. It's 
So you can see the uh, length difference there between the V6. And again, they do have a collet adapter that would make it the same length as a V6, making it easier to adapt to printers. This particular Pico Hybrid is a pre-production unit, so there are some changes, and when you look on their website, you, you will see some differences. Now, one thing, they are including a silicon heat sock on the heater block. Now, one thing that that will do, as you can see right now, the heater wires have quite a range of motion. With the silicon sock on there, it'll limit to about 120 degrees. Not a big deal, still, still quite a bit of room to uh, rotate it around. It is machined and assembled in the US. They are going to have a Bowden variety as well as um, direct drive. There will be various machined and printable mounting options to easily swap it from old hot ends. It's been thermally verified through FEA analysis and extensive beta testing and I will be testing this out on an Ender 3, so I've got, uh, you can see the Ender 3 hot end here. I'm going to test the Ender 3 first on that, then on the Pico Hybrid, and for some added uh, comparison, the Nova as well. Okay, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, one thing I will comment, even though this is a pre-production unit, the machining on both the PTFE, the nozzles, and the hot end unit itself, the machining quality is really good. Now my collet, I, I did uh, nick, so I had to, I polished it, so that's why the collet looks a little bit shinier and scuffed up. So that was my fault. Uh, it's what you get for uh, nicking it on accidentally with a uh, X-Acto knife. But anyway, other than that, the machining quality looks looks good. Um, look forward to testing this and getting back to you hopefully in about a week. And uh, I will have a video on my Prusa Mini and what I think of that after about 75 hours of printing right now. It is in the back doing a vase, vase print. And so once that vase print is done, I have some time lapses on the Prusa Mini to upload. It's been doing these big screws. So these take 18 hours. It's been doing this nut. A um, lot, of, lot of infill, a lot of uh, perimeter. So this nut it was taking 24 hours. And so I've run a full spool of a uh, PETG through the Prusa Mini and a little bit of PLA so gonna go ahead and stop it after this base print and we'll put a put a video up of that any comments on the metaform.us Pico Hybrid hot end please ask in the comment section and I will ask uh, one of the company founders of metaform.us to chime in as well and then check their website for more information in case there's something I missed. Um, still getting used to these videos and getting work, getting used to how the cameras work, where to look. Um, and I really need to quit saying um. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I, I look forward to showing you some more videos and uh, putting some better quality videos out there for you to, to look at. Thank you so much.